we remain confined to planet Earth, sooner or later we will destroy ourselves. The only long-term survival plan that works is to spread out into space. The sooner we start, the better. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen and kids, and welcome. And thank you all for coming to listen to me this evening. I know it's a bit warm this evening, but don't worry, because in a few moments, we're going to be blasting off to the chilly depths of outer space. So I think the temperature will be falling quite rapidly. Because um, that's what we're going to do this evening. We're going to go on a great cosmic adventure. And I am going to be your guide. And so, well, who am I? I am Lucy Hawking. I'm an author, and I work with scientists to get them to tell me about their research so we can write adventure stories about, about the work that they do. So we write adventure stories about the universe. And the exciting thing for the young people in this room is you're probably about the right age, so that when you grow up, you'd probably be about the right age to be the first human on Mars. We can look around for a second planet Earth. All the time we're finding hundreds if not thousands of new planets. And yes, maybe one of them will be like the Earth. But we can't get there. These planets are so far away. We've just managed to get to the moon. We're trying to get to Mars. But we would have no way of covering the enormous distance to a new planet Earth. Even if we could find it, it's going to take a revolution in the way we travel across space for us to get there. What if you could go back in time? What if you could go back and see yourself in the 80s? Do you think you might change your hairstyle, use a bit less hair mousse, all sorts of things going on there? Um, or even further, if I could go back to 1974, if I could meet myself when I was the age of some of the young people here, what would that be like? Is that possible? Well, this banner comes from a party my father held. He has a theory that if time travel becomes possible in the future, that we should be visited now by tourists from the future coming back to see us in the past. Yeah, well done, you kept up. <laughs> that's, a slight, that's a complicated one. So what he did, he printed invitations and he left them in places that he thought would survive into the future, giving the exact time and the coordinates of his party. We gathered, we put up the banner, we ha had balloons, we opened the crisps, we got out the fizzy drinks, and nobody came. Now, obviously, this doesn't exactly prove that time travel is not possible, but it's a neat example of one way we can think about time travel. Um, and I'd like to say to the young people in the audience, what we always say, which is good luck on all your cosmic journeys, because it won't be me who travels further across the solar system than anyone's ever been and stands on a new planet, or who perhaps picks up a signal from intelligent extraterrestrial life, or who invents a new form of space travel that takes us further than we've ever been before. It'll be one of the young people in this room. So I'd just like to say good luck on all your cosmic journeys, and thank you so much for listening. Thank mm -hmm. you. 